Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again with a full review of the Vivor PPS300-3 Portable Power Station. This little guy packs so much energy that you can charge and operate all of your portable devices when you're away from home. Now, it's not the biggest portable power station on the market, but you have to remember you're trying to balance power with portability, and this weighs about 7 pounds, and it has 296 watt-hours of internal energy and can provide 300 watts of external energy that you can use to charge and operate all of your thirsty portable devices. Now, 7 pounds is about the same weight as the average bowling ball or a newborn baby, so it's small enough, again, to take with you pretty much anywhere. You'll almost forget you have it with you until you realize that your camera batteries are low, your drone batteries are low, maybe your phone is almost out of power, and you can plug it in and charge everything up. Now, before I get too deep into the specifications and all the things that are in the product, I wanted to start with an unboxing just to show you everything that's included with the kit, and that way you'll understand exactly what you get if you decide this is the right product for you. And then I'll dive into the specifications because any good portable power station needs to have a way to charge it easily to retain that power and then deliver that power when you're out in the field to charge and operate all your devices. And Vivor's really thought about all of those aspects when they built this particular product. And what's interesting about it is typically a smaller portable power station like this doesn't provide a lot of advanced features, but this one does. And I'll get into all that in a minute, but let's get started with the unboxing. So when you first open up the box, you'll find the portable power station. Again, about seven pounds. I'm holding it with one hand, just like I would a bowling ball. It's got a really nice handle on the top. There's a ventilation fan on the side. All of your ports are on the front so you can connect up all your portable devices. You also have a really nice LED display in the front that gives you all the information you need to understand about the current status of the product. And on the other side, you've got a courtesy light with five different selections. You can turn it on low, medium, and high. You can put it in SOS mode if you're broken down on the side of the road, or you can put it in strobe mode to let people know you're out there in the woods. Also in the kit is an AC charging kit that you can use at home, a DC charging kit that you can use with your car. You'll plug that into your convenience outlet. The other end has a barrel connector which plugs right into the front of the unit. So you can charge it at home, you can charge it in your car, you can even charge it with a portable solar panel if you want when you're out in the field. And that's really handy because you can find a really small solar panel, maybe 100 watts, set it up outside your tent, plug it into the front of the unit, drink in that sunlight which is converted to electrons and fire it at the battery so you can actually charge the unit when you're out in the field. So plenty of ways to charge it. One hidden way to charge it is through the USB-C connection on the front. This unit has a bi-directional USB-C port that delivers 100 watts of external power. That can be used for charging the unit when you're out in the field. So if you want to charge it at home, you can actually combine the AC charging unit with the USB-C charging and, char and charge the unit about half the time. Finally, there's a full instruction manual that's included with the product that gives you all the information you could possibly ever want to know about the product, how to charge it, how to discharge it, how to read the display up front, uh, all the information about connections and things you'll care about. Now, let's get into the unit a little bit deeper. And as I mentioned before, any portable power station you're considering has to provide an easy way to charge it, again, at home, in your car, off a solar panel, and in this case, you can actually charge it through the USB-C. Once it's charged, how do you use that power out in the field? So I've talked already about the ways you can charge it. I love the fact that they provide that advanced functionality that allows you to charge it with the AC unit at home in addition to charging it off a USB-C charger. Now, if you're going to use the USB-C port on the front, you'll want to use a very powerful USB charger. 100 watts would work great, and that's typically a charger you'll find with most laptops. There's a lot of wall chargers that'll deliver 100 watts of PD charging power as well. But if you use just the AC unit, it could take four or five hours to charge it. If you combine that with the USB-C charging, you can charge it in about two and a half hours. So you can charge it quickly to get out the door. You can also charge it in your car. Now, for me, I've been using this for a couple of weeks. I charge it at home, I take it with me out in the field. If I'm transferring between different locations out in the field, I'll top it off in the car when I'm driving to that new location. I never recommend plugging it into your car and then leaving it there with the car turned off because remember, it's drinking those electrons out of your car battery and the worst thing that can happen is you come back from your camping trip to jump in your car, you put the keys in the ignition and the car won't start because you've drawn so much energy out of that battery that there's not enough to start your car. So typically only charge this when your car is running or for short periods when the car is off. The solar panel option is really nice as well because they built this to be compatible with a wide range of different solar panels. So pretty much any solar panel you can find with 100 watts or lower, you can plug into the front of it. And I love charging through a solar panel because it's free energy from the sun. And how much cooler can it be to set up that little solar panel outside your tent and wake up and you've got a fully charged unit? 
All right, so now inside the unit, it's using lithium batteries. And there's a lot of different battery chemistries on the market today. Lithium iron phosphate is the latest generation of battery technology, tends to be a little bit pricey. This uses lithium batteries, which work really well and are really common for smaller portable power stations like this. You'll get well over a thousand charges. And if you think about that, it doesn't seem like a lot of charges, even though it's a thousand charges. But if you charge it once a day, and you won't because you're not going to use it every day. But if you charge it once a day, okay, that's three years of use. I promise you, by the time you get to that thousandth charge, you'll want to replace this with something newer because there's going to be new technology coming out. But typically, maybe you use it on the weekend. Maybe you use it every other weekend. You're going to get five years out of the thing, 10 years out of the thing. So I'm not that much worried about the batteries. The only concern I would have with them is that they don't operate really well in hot weather or cold weather. So if you're taking it out camping, just make sure you protect it. Don't leave it outside your tent if you're going to get frost or snow, bring it in the tent with you so it stays at a moderate temperature. All right, so you understand how to charge it. You understand what kind of battery chemistry is inside. Now the important part, and where a lot of other portable power stations fall down, is how do I use that stored energy to charge and operate my external devices? Well, typically a portable power station will have three outputs or three different styles of outputs, AC, DC, just like in your car, 12 volts, and USB. I'll start with the AC. With an AC output, there's one thing you want to look for, and that's a pure sine wave. This unit has pure sine wave output on it. It's got 296 watt hours of internal energy, and you'll see there are two AC outlets on the front. You can draw up to 300 watts of external charging power from those two AC outlets, and again, it's a pure sine wave. A lot of other portable power stations, especially the smaller ones, use a modified sine wave circuit, and that's okay for chargers and things like that, but if you're gonna plug anything into it that's sensitive electronics, you wanna make sure you have a pure sine wave. This one has that pure sine wave. Let's talk about the DC output. You have a single DC output right here, just like in your car, and that's a standard connector. So anything you plug in your car, you can plug in right there. That'll deliver 12 volts at 10 amps. But in addition to that, below it, you'll find two 5521 barrel connections. Both of those deliver 12 volts as well. Between the three of them, you can draw 12 volts at 10 amps, which is a lot of current. And you may be thinking, well, what am I gonna use those barrel connectors for on the bottom? Well, there's a ton of cables on the market that convert a 5521 port like that to a charging cable for your game console, your drone batteries, your laptop, your tablet. You can find those out there on the market, plug it in there, plug it into the device, it'll charge it directly. You can also find conversion cables that will turn those 5521 ports into standard ports like this. So you could actually have three ports you can use at the same time to use that 12 volt current. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. Finally, we'll talk about the USB. Now USB charging falls into one of two categories, the older style, which was USB-A, and that's the larger connector that was used on USB products really since the beginning of time. And that's fairly standard in wall chargers today. So if you've got a wall charger that has the larger USB-A connection on it, this unit provides two of those ports on the front. Both of those are QC ports, which is a quick charging technology, actually interrogates the device you plug into that port. And if that device is using the QC standard, it'll figure that out It'll figure out what kind of voltage and current that unit needs to charge it quickly and safely, and the unit will adjust its voltage and current to flatter that device to quickly, safely charge it. So it's a smart unit from that QC perspective. On the USB-C side, which is the other standard, that's the smaller connector that's used on a lot of modern electronics. That's the one everybody's converting to. If you've got a newer phone or tablet or game console or drone batteries, they're all using USB-C ports. You'll find two USB-C ports on the front of this unit as well, which is the other quick charging standard. So if you're using drone batteries, drone controllers, game consoles, laptop tablets that use that PD standard, this unit will do the same interrogation through that USB-C port. It'll look at the device that was plugged in. It'll figure out what the charge level is currently, and then it'll adjust its voltage and current to quickly and safely charge that device. The interesting thing is there are two USB-C ports. The one I mentioned before can deliver 100 watts of external power. The other one can deliver 27 watts. So if you're charging a phone, plug it into the 27 watt port. If you're going to charge a laptop or drone batteries or bigger tablets, plug it into the 100 watt port. The reason that's important is because most of the portable power stations in the market that offer a USB-C port are nowhere near 100 watts, and 100 watts is what you need to charge your laptop or the larger tablets or your drone batteries or other devices like portable gaming consoles. So I think they've thought of everything for the USB-C side because I've got two ports, again, 100 watts on one, 27 watts on the other one, and I've got two USB-A ports, and the best thing, and I saved this to last, is that it's a charge-through device. And what I mean by that is 
While you're charging the device, all of the ports on the front are active, which means you can plug it in at home, charge the internal batteries, and you're getting ready to leave for a trip. You can plug in all your portable gear to the unit, and all those ports are active, so you can charge the internal batteries at the same time you're charging the external devices. Same thing in your car, so if you're driving to a campsite and you need to charge your phone or your drone batteries, you forgot to charge the tablet, plug this into your car, plug those devices into the unit, it acts like a Swiss Army knife of charging, so I can charge all those devices simultaneously while I'm charging the internal batteries. Also, there's a display on the top, and the interesting thing about the display is that it gives you all the information you care about when you're using the unit. It tells you what kind of current you're drawing out of the unit, what kind of current you're putting into the unit when you're charging it. It'll give you all kinds of information about the ports that are connected and let you know which ports are being used and how much current's being drawn by those ports. And that's really important because if you're camping, maybe you're out for a day or two, you're starting to get a little low on power, you want to make sure you plug in the things that really matter at that point so you can use the remaining energy to charge your phone so that if you need to use the GPS in your phone to get back to the car, you'll have plenty of power. The last thing I wanted to mention is that the unit itself has an incredibly important battery management system built in. And that's really important because it's the governing circuit that handles the inrush current to charge the batteries and distributes those across all the cells inside. It's also the same circuit that protects all of your external devices when you're plugging in your phone, your tablet, all those portable devices, and it ensures that safely it can charge all those devices without causing any damage externally. It has overcurrent protection built in, over voltage, over temperature, so all the things that would damage the unit or damage those external devices is constantly being monitored inside the unit to make sure that it's going to charge everything really safely. There's a cooling fan on the side. If you're using the AC portion of this, you're going to draw a little bit more current. It's going to work a little harder because the AC inverter turned on, the fan will turn on and cool everything down. And the last thing I'll mention is the side. You see the light right there. You can turn it on by hitting that button. That's low, that's medium, and that's high. If I want to go to SOS, I'll tap it again. There's your SOS. Tap it again, it's going to strobe mode. So I like the fact that I've got a couple of different choices, and I didn't think I'd use that as often as I actually do because it's like having a flashlight with me and a portable power station in one, so pretty cool. So overall, I think Vivor has done a great job with this product. Again, it's on the smaller end of the portable power station market. There are portable power stations that go up to hundreds and thousands of watt hours, but having a unit that's small like this really makes it the perfect choice if you're heading out for a hike or a picnic or maybe a couple of days of camping. Small enough to bring along with you. It's not going to take up a lot of space. You're not dragging a 50-pound power station out in the field. So I think they've really done a great job of packing all the features I care about into a unit that weighs about 7 pounds, and it gives me all the options I need to charge and operate all my thirsty portable devices. So hopefully you found this review helpful. I like this unit an awful lot and I think you will as well. Thanks again for watching and until next time, as always, stay nerdy.